Hi everybody, it's Lisa. I've been asked to do a quick tutorial on how to make the corker ribbon. Um, there's plenty of videos on YouTube um, to show you how to do the corker ribbon, but I've been making it for a wee while and a couple of people asked me if I could show them because it was in the, I used it in the hot chocolate gift set that I just recently posted. So I'm going to give you a quick run through and it was actually my daughter who showed me how to make this and this is what the ribbon looks like. Um, once you've curled it and it's really really pretty you can use this for hair bows or for embellishments it's really nice in christmas things you can use all different types of ribbon all different textures um, and it's really effective so what you will need are uh, these wooden sticks and I'm not really very prepared because I should have gone on to eBay to check what you call them. Are they wooden dowels, wood, wooden dowlings, something like that. But um, I bought them off eBay ages and ages ago. You just keep using them and using them. Very inexpensive. They are around... They are about... A quarter of an inch they're not any more than a quarter of an inch thickness maybe they're maybe classed as six millimeters and a couple of wooden clothes pegs everything needs to be wooden because you're going to be putting them in the oven to set them and I just wrap the ribbon round wrap it round a couple of times and secure it with a clothes peg and then what you're going to do is keep wrapping now the top will be a wee bit messy but you're probably going to cut that away and then what I find works best is turning the actual doweling and then you'll see there that there's some gaps just close those gaps by gently sliding it up and um, you don't want to overlap the ribbon one bit on top of each another you want the edges to be touching so there you'll see hope you can see because i'm using the iphone and i can't see what i'm filming but there you'll see the edges are touching but the ribbon isn't overlapping and there we have some gaps again we'll gently slide that up and as you're sliding it up just check your tension make sure it's nice and tight that there's no bumps and then just keep turning and winding till you are down at the bottom and this ribbon is uh, let me see it's not even a half inch thick it's it's the thinnest it's about three eighths three eighths of an inch i do find that ribbon is the best size to use i think the one that is this thickness would be a little bit more awkward but you could give it a try I suppose and see how it works for you so just keep winding see it's gone a little bit bumpy but just keep going back and smoothing it all out then get right down to the bottom then you're going to um, go round it a couple of times at the bottom just to make sure it catches snip it off and secure it with a clothespin 
when you have got you can do a few of them at the one time and um, heat them up in the oven together I always try to have my clothes pins facing the same way but that's because I'm a bit weird that way um, but once you've got a few of them made up like that you would then get a baking tray and put a grease proof paper over it so that your ribbon's not going to pick up any grease or anything that's sticking around on your tray so line your tray with grease proof paper and just set them in side by side you know like that or alternatively alternatively you could use a casserole dish I have done that and I've stuck them inside and they've been you know leaning up over the edge of the dish and once you've done that the oven temperature I use is about 120 degrees now I'm not sure if that's Fahrenheit or centigrade I've got absolutely no idea because I'm rubbish at that sort of thing but the highest temperature in my my oven is 250 degrees and I heat these up at 120 degrees so it is a very low oven and I put them in the center of my oven for about 15 minutes and I really want to give you a warning I've got no idea what your cooker's like I don't want to be responsible for anybody causing any fires but the secret is a very low oven for a very short period of time and I never walk away and leave the ribbon while it's setting in the oven I always stand outside the oven and I keep checking it I bring it out make sure everything's okay and once you're you're done um certainly no longer than 15 minutes you will bring it out the oven and the ribbon will be warm and it's actually the, I think it's the starch in the ribbon that actually um, seals it. You know, it's like when you do iron ironing and you spray starch onto the clothes you're ironing and it sets them and it makes them go uh, firm. It's the starch in the ribbon that actually holds it together. And I just leave them until they are cool I don't touch them at all I always find it's like when you're curling your hair if you leave it to go cool it'll make the curl last longer so that's what I do and I even just once they're done I take the clothes pins off and I do actually keep them on this until I'm ready to use them and then you know they're not going to get squashed but when you take them off you're literally just sliding the ribbon off the wood and this is what you get now this one this ribbon here is a uh, trimmed with a kind of metallic edging and I was a wee bit worried about putting that in the oven but it's came out great it's absolutely beautiful and then you just cut it and use it you know whatever way you want to um, I find the grain ribbon, which is this kind of ribbed ribbon, works best, but um, I'm sure you could have a, a try and experiment a wee bit and see if anything works. Like, you know, this would probably work as well. And a little secret for you, when you take it off, you will have rough bits where your clothes peg has attached so what you would do is you just cut all that away when you go to use it and another good tip for you when you use any form of ribbon even tying a bow in your journals I always scorch the edge of the ribbon now this I know this isn't going to work ah oh, there we go it worked and I use one of these candle lighters and you're basically just running it along a couple of times 
And once it's cooled, you will feel a harder edge and that's how you know that it's worked. So let's do this end, if there's any juice left in this. And sometimes certain ribbons, um, you know, the kind of, oh, what do you call it? I can't remember what it's called, but it's a see-through organza type ribbon. It really melts quickly, so you literally need to just whiz it past the edge. Um, so there you go. I'm hoping I've remembered to tell you everything. If you have a different type of oven to mine, just Google it and see what a similar temperature would be. And if you do try it, always, always cook it on a low heat and stand right outside the oven. The same as you would do when you're drying out your tea stained papers. And that's it. So thank you very much for watching and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I'll see you all again soon. Thank you. Bye.